Looter shooters of the past have engaged and entertained audience for almost a decade now. Games like Destiny, The Division, Warframe, and dare I say Anthem have set the tone for this relatively new video game genre. That's not to say they haven't come with their own problems though. From each game, developers in this new genre have learned and applied new ideas and fixes in each of their respective games in an attempt to make the best experience for looter shooter fans. Enter Outriders, the game touted to be the apex of the genre. Taking successful ideas from some of those previously mentioned games and expanding on them to bring its audience the best experience this genre has to offer. But is Outriders everything that it was promoted to be? It doesn't improve on ideas and mechanics laid down from its predecessors. What's up guys, it's P from PTV. Today we're going to dive into a full review. I believe my 250 hours playing the game after its release three weeks ago is enough to provide you with all the good, the bad, and everything in between. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Also, comment down below, is Outriders the best of the looter shooter genre? If so, why? If not, why not? I do want to preface this by saying I thoroughly enjoy the game and have enjoyed creating content covering the game since its launch several weeks ago. Let's begin this journey with the pros. The first and most obvious pro is the gameplay. All of my hours playing the game come from the Xbox Series X. My gameplay experience has been very smooth and reliable 4K resolution and 60 frames per second. While the visuals are smooth, I have to say, the development team at People Can Fly have done a masterful job of crafting together an experience that allows me to feel like an overpowered god of fire who runs around slaying and melting his enemies with no second thoughts. This bolsters the look and feeling of all the skills that my outrider uses. My main character is a pyromancer and the experience of running around in armor that looks like molten lava while summoning fire from the ground to incinerate my enemies looks and feels absolutely amazing. While there are only a handful of skills for each class, I found that my gameplay experience differs wildly when using different combinations of skills, abilities, and mods. Speaking of skills, this brings me to my next pro. Classes. Each class feels completely unique and different from one another. I mentioned my gameplay has come from the Pyromancer class, which is the Summoner of Fire. You also have the Technomancer class, a class that specializes in toxic and mid to long range combat. A trickster who can manipulate time and space and has the ability to teleport. And a Devastator, which is a close range build that specializes in paling its enemies and causing them to bleed. Each class looks and feels completely different, offering very unique gameplay from one another which, in turn, offers countless hours of replayability for those interested in trying out all the Outriders classes. But a looter shooter wouldn't be complete without loot that is rewarding enough for the grind to be worth it. I'm happy to say I've been pleasantly surprised with the legendary gear for two reasons. Every piece of legendary gear looks unique. If I join a party with a friend, I find myself checking out the way their character looks to see what cool and awesome legendary equipment they may be using. The other thing that makes all the legendary gear so cool is their unique abilities. The guaranteed tier 3 mod that comes with this gear offers very cool gameplay altering skills. Not to mention, the ability to break down and craft other legendaries with two tier 3 mods that essentially make some pieces double powered legendaries. It's been a very cool experience theory crafting all the mods for every piece of equipment to manipulate my character and all of his abilities. Unfortunately, this is where my positives end for Outriders. Like I previously mentioned, I have enjoyed the game immensely, but it does have a few problems that have really tarnished the experience of the first few weeks. To begin, like most video game launches nowadays, the always online game was brought to its knees by players' inability to stay connected with the Outriders' struggling servers. I cannot tell you how many times I've been deep into an in-game expedition, only to be kicked out straight to the menu with no reward for my progress. The developers have gotten plenty of flack from the community about this, but I do need to set the record straight on something. The developers are not responsible for server stability, as far as I know. People Can Fly's Outriders was published as a Square Enix game. For perspective, Square Enix is a massive publisher with tons of money to purchase servers to allow stability on their always online game. They've let fans down by not appropriately stress testing their servers enough pre-launch. In addition to that, I find myself speculating on Outriders Game Pass presence on the Microsoft platforms. Do they have the ability to use Microsoft servers? I'm not exactly sure. I will say, I've never been a part of the process of purchasing servers for a new IP, and most of that is speculation. But 
To be fair to me, consumers don't actually care why your servers are unstable. They're just tired of it. Another con is one that I've tried hard not to mention on the content of my channel. For some, this has been a game-breaking bug to the point where they've chosen to close the app forever, unlikely to return. Of course, I'm talking about the notorious inventory wipe bug. About a week after launch, the bug hit a large minority of accounts. This essentially took all of your progress in the form of loot gathered and completely erased it from your account. While people can fly have guaranteed to restore the accounts who have had their inventories wiped, at least to a certain extent, people were horrified of booting up the game for the next week and change, worried that if they did, they would be risking their characters and all of the hours of hard work they invested up to that point. As of the making of this video, a good many accounts are still left to be restored and I know the community has been furious. After the inventory wipe was patched, this led to our next con, multiplayer gameplay. After the bug was patched and people came out of hiding, many were excited to boot their games up and play again with friends, only to link up in lobbies that were an absolute shambles. Multiplayer lobbies have an aggressive tendency to stutter, skip frames, and even ignore your player commands. Trust me, there is nothing more frustrating than trying to work through waves of enemies through tattered gameplay, only to have your skill commands ignored. On top of that, there's a massive connectivity issue. Some have speculated this is only happening in cross-platform lobbies, but I can say from experience, I've gone through the same problem playing in an Xbox-only lobby. The last con I'll mention is one that will probably be more difficult to fix, as it pertains to the format of the endgame. Expeditions are the heart and soul of the endgame grind. The rewards for finishing have an increased chance depending on what tier you run and how long it takes for you to finish, to drop legendary items upon completion. Because these expeditions are basically time trials, this has turned the community's attention to making builds that have the ability to kill things faster in order to complete the expeditions within the time allotted. While on the surface this may not seem like it's such a travesty, it has essentially null and voided a large portion of mods and even an entire class's builds. The most affected class being the Devastator. Devastators have a more natural orientation to playing as a tank archetype. A tank in most MMORPGs is an essential part of every group, but its inability to deal large amounts of damage, specifically to multiple enemies at once, has almost made this entire class extinct. I know many players have completely ditched the Devastator in favor of the higher DPS builds like the Technomancer, for instance. The big issue in this problem, like I mentioned, is that the problem stems from an in-game formatting and can't necessarily be fixed with a simple nerf or buff to skills or items. In conclusion to this review, I do want to say that I am truly rooting for this game. At its core, it is incredibly fun to play. I love the feeling of joining with my friends and seeing all of our combinations of skills and abilities at work. I think that is truly one of the coolest feelings in RPGs at the moment. I hope that people can fly and Square Enix quickly address the problems without unintentionally adding more. As it stands now, all of the current issues have cost the community a good portion of its members. Here's to hoping they make sure they don't lose any more. If you enjoyed this, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. I'm grateful for all the eyes on my content thus far and appreciate everyone who takes the time to support. That said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.